Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Connected with Kelly, and today we are connecting with Devin Dawson. Now, Devin and I have been friends for a number of years. You know him because he had an incredible album, Dark Horse is one of my favorite songs, but then he's also been a writer on God's Country with Blake Shelton and One Beer with Hardy and Lauren Elena right now. So we dive in because he has a brand new EP called Pink Slip. These songs are amazing, and I cannot wait for you to hear a story he shares with me about getting his first truck. You don't want to miss it. Let's get connected with Devin Dawson. All right, Devin Dawson. Friend, listen, I was going down memory lane and I'm like, when did we meet? And I thought, when, and I when thought, was it? Taylor Swift concert. Oh man, the one that we like went to go, just like friends and family ticket and go see her. Cause she had our video in like the pre show in Nashville. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. I got that dream. So it's gonna be forever. Dream. Look oh, it's gonna go eye. down. You can tell me when it's over. Isn't that crazy? And I just really thought, man, if if I could just fast forward and look at what you're doing now. I mean, did you know back then? Did you know this was the path and this was where you were going to end up? I mean, there's no way to know that. You know what I mean? I definitely had um, things I was shooting for and mountains I wanted to climb. Um, and so I think I knew I had in my heart that I wanted to have a chance to say something, but I didn't know I would ever have that chance. You know what I mean? And so... I'm thankful for what Taylor did to kind of put me on the map and give me an opportunity to say, okay, what do I want to do now? You know what I mean? Like, do I want to sing? Do I want to have a voice on stage? Do I want to just write songs? What do I want to do? And I have a chance to do both. And that's something that I'm always going to be thankful for from her and taking a shot on a couple college kids that she had no idea about. You know what I mean? So it's pretty dope. It is pretty dope. Okay. So I want to talk about Pink Slip, but before I dive into that, where does your brain fall most of the time? Are you usually in songwriter mode? Are you always in artist mode, but maybe the song you wrote didn't fit for you? Like, how does that all work together? Yeah, I, the best way I can describe it is I always say I'm 51% artist, 49, I'm sorry, 51% songwriter, 49% artist. It's like, I usually like prioritize the craft a little bit more than I prioritize presenting the craft. You know what I mean? Um, even though it's still 50, 50 for me, like I just want to, I want to write, I want to serve the song. You know what I mean? Like I'll write a song every day, but not every song is going to be for me. Um, and sometimes it's nice to just write a song that you have no connection with and just let somebody else sing it. You know what I mean? Or just not no connection with, but you know what I mean? It's like a certain song that, I love to write this idea of a song, but maybe the sonics or maybe a couple of the things aren't exactly how I would say it because there's co-writers and all that. Sometimes it's freeing to just write a song and not think about this has to be for me. And so it, it can get a little like weighty sometimes and a little pressure filled when you're like, I need to write for me today, you know? Right. And even through that, sometimes I trick myself into writing one for myself. You know what I mean? This, this is a, this overthinking like circle that I think a lot of artists go through. Um, but I, I tend to prioritize the, the creating of it a little bit more than I do the presenting of it, you know? Well, there's absolutely no doubt in listening to the EP that these songs were absolutely meant for you, that you wrote these songs for yourself and that they are coming from a very personal place. So yeah, let's, let's dive right in with Range Rover. Um, first of all, everybody wants a Range Rover, right? But when I heard it and I'm listening to the lyrics, it took me a second to get in and go, oh, I, okay, I see where this is heading. I see that this is, this was not the girl for you because obviously exactly. it was just, it was a, yeah. a total shift. But right when you were writing this, like, where did that settle in? Was it a collection of experiences that came together? Or is there really something that you went through that's pretty close to what this was? I mean, the only thing that I could really, like, describe as far as what I related to from a true story standpoint was that I did get the girl that was down to ride in the truck with me. Because, I, I mean, I picked up my wife on our first date in my shitty old 1999 Silverado like probably wasn't as clean as it should have been you know what I mean so like I got that girl so I knew where I was going and I think sometimes with songs you just got to start with truth and then let the story go where it wants to go and serve the song like I said 
And so I knew where the finish line was already for me. And it was really just about coloring up um, the story beforehand, you know, but it did kind of come from the inspiration of it. Like, just came from a conversation like it was me and Ben Rector and uh, Mark Trussell who wrote it and we were just kind of talking in the early morning and catching up and Mark had a song in the top 20 and it was climbing and he's like I'm about to finally get some money coming in and um, he was like I probably should buy my wife a new car and we were like what does she want and Mark said I think she wants a Range Rover and we were all just like laughing about the stereotypical like trophy wife just looking for the Range Rover, you know? Um, and we were just kind of like, I think we liked the idea of conquering the challenge of writing that song and doing it in, in a country way or in a relatable way. And I think the reference was like a country version of Kanye's Gold Digger. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> that was like how we like stated it. And then as soon as I said, all oh, my friends, it just kind of made sense from that first line, you know? Um, but it is, it is asking, you know, it does, it does take a second. It, it takes you on this journey and then you're like, oh, I see what you yeah. did there. You know what right. I mean? Which that's country music. You let them in a little bit at a time and you tell the story and then you hit them with the meaning at the end of the chorus, you know? And so I'm just proud of that song and, 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 you know, the process and the journey it took to create it and get it right and then record it and make it sound the way it should. And, um, I'm proud of that one for sure. It's fun. All right. Tell me more about your truck. You, you have the song, I Got a Truck. So tell me more. Do you still have this old 1999 Silverado? To my wife's dismay, yes, it's sitting in my driveway right now. Um, it's, a, it's a 1999 Chevy Silverado, all black, of course, single cab, short bed, but it's got the 5.3 V8 in it. So it's a bigger engine and a smaller truck. And it's just... I love it. I've had it since I was in California. Um, I got it from a from a lady that I used to work at a feed store, like a kind of a I was like baling hay and like feed and like horse feed and stuff like that. And there was a lady that I actually haven't told the story um, a lot, but there was like a lady that was a regular and she would come in every day and get one bale of hay at the end of the night. And I, one day I was like, why don't you get seven and come in once a week. You know what I mean? And she was like, well, my husband passed away and I can't like handle seven. I can only handle one at a time. And she would drive this truck, you know? Um, and eventually I was like, Hey, what if I just drop seven off, you know, at your house later tonight, I help you out if you need it, whatever. And so she became a regular and a friend. And then when it came time for me to move to Nashville, um, she knew that I was moving and knew I was looking for like a truck. Cause I drove a car at that point or like I was borrowing a car or something and um, there was no way I was going to fit all my stuff into a, a car driving to Nashville. And so she said, Hey, like, I don't necessarily need this truck anymore really. And um, whatever you end up selling your car for, like I'll sell you the truck for that. You know what I mean? And so she was such a big part of my story and even giving a chance to get my stuff to Nashville. And, um, and then, and I think that's why when I heard Tim McGraw tell me the story of, his truck and how it helped him get his start in Nashville. I just related so much to it. And there were so many parallels in both of our stories, trying to, trying to get our start in Nashville that it was just like so inspiring not to write it. Like I just couldn't help, but it was, I just went into a trance and I just wrote it, you know? Um, and we used the truck in the video and it's like, it's this, this whole kind of full circle thing. Um, and it's not every day that you get like an honest, true story. Like, again, like we were talking about Range Rover starting from truth, but really kind of just filling in the blanks and having fun with it. I got a truck is in 100% inspired, not even inspired, but it is a true story. You know what I mean? And it's not every day that you get a song like that landing in your lap. And it's not every day that you get to be the the interpreter and the vessel for that story and that, that song. And um, that song is just always will be a special one for me. So I have to know, have you kept up with her? Have you talked to her? Does she know? I mean, obviously she knows you're, you know, making it. You're, you're killing it now. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I haven't talked to her since I left. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't like necessarily have her phone number or anything. Um, I had an interview once that asked me about like what her name was. And I like, I knew her first name. And then I went back to, uh, I went back to the, I looked in the truck and I found an old, I found an old pink slip. You know what I mean? An old title with her name on it. And like, so she's been shouted out in interviews and stuff, but, um, you know, we, I mean, she's living her life and I'm living mine and sometimes that's enough, you know what I mean? So it's, 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 there's definitely so many layers to that, that song. And that's why this has felt like the title of the EP and it just, you know, 
it all it all comes together. And if you want to know more about it, there's there's layers there for you. You know what I mean? Well, I'm gonna surprise you right now and bring her in. Wouldn't that be awesome? I would be the best. God. Come <laughs> on, be- <laughs> Ellen or Oprah. You uh-huh. get a truck. You get a truck. You know what I mean? I would actually kind of freak out. Was, okay, that's next level. If I could pull that off, I would be next level right not, there. Not only is your aesthetic crushing right now, but you went above and beyond and you tracked the woman down before I, I even off. told you the story. Man. Okay, that I, I'm going to make that my mission, though. That's going to be my mission. Hey, you brought up videos and the video for He Loved Her with your grandparents. Okay, first of all, that song, when I heard it, immediately I was like, okay, this is somebody he knows. This is written about somebody he knows before I even realized that it was the story of your grandparents. But then tell us about that, about the video. I mean, that's what we need. We need these stories in 2021 moving forward. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like that's the most simple song I've ever put out. And I think sometimes like I get the best of myself because I need so much from music and I need them all to check every single box. And I need to really, I like challenging my listener. Like, challenging myself pushing the boundaries and all that but I do also need something something that's just simple but still hits hard you know and that's what this song is and um it started out I wrote it with Jordan Reynolds and Nicole Galleon and the the day started out with me like it's no secret like I like to like kind of lean into the darker side of music usually and so I wanted to write a song called Tombstone about like what I would put on my tombstone And they were like, okay, we like the idea, but maybe we just don't go so morbid with it. And I think Nicole was like, if you had three words, what would they be right now? Don't think. And I just said, he loved her. That's the first thing I said. And she was like, okay, now that's a song right there, you know? And so we just kind of, we actually wrote a verse and chorus um, that we completely scrapped. And because it just wasn't right enough. It was more like, you know, he loved her in the sense of like, you know, he, she wanted this house, so he bought it and she wanted it this color. And so he painted it. And just when he finished the last board, she said it was the wrong shade. And every morning she'd make him breakfast and he'd eat it anyway, even though she burned the eggs. Like those kind of things where it was like he loved her. But like it started to become to a point where I kind of like didn't like the girl. You know what I mean? Like I was like <laughs> kind of annoyed by her. And right, I was right. like, I have this thing where like most of the time I want to like every character in the song for something, you know what I mean? And I just kind of had this feeling of like, I don't know if that's right, you guys. And, you know, we kind of just went downstairs and had some coffee and we're like, what if we just write it more about like less, I think our first instinct always as songwriters, especially in country music is to go talk about the girl, especially if it's called He Loved Her. So instead of zooming in on her, what if we just zoom zoom in on him? You know what I mean? and the really time, the only time you hear about her is at the end of the chorus, because on top of all these other things, he loved her, you know? And so we just, I just thought about my grandpa and the kind of man he is and the kind of legacy that he's leaving behind, you know, he's still here and he'll be here for a little more, a little while longer. I got, I hope, you know, but um, it just kind of came together really easy. And um, like you said, I just thought about my, my grandfather. And again, when there's something when there's an anchor that's real that you can draw from, it makes it makes the rest of it a hell of a lot easier, you know. And the video, putting putting all of that together. So how long had it been since you'd actually seen them? I, I it's almost it had almost been a full year, you know, because usually we'll go home and play shows, and I'll get to just travel back and see them. And um, I hadn't been home probably since probably December, you know. And then I went home for Thanksgiving in late November, and. Um, I, you know, it was one of those things where it was like, I'm really taking a shot and in, 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 in doing something um, maybe that I should be doing by traveling and going home. But it was something that I was like, aside from like being able to like have a you know video and make memories, it was just like, I just want to see my family, you know. And so obviously I took every single precaution and got tests on both sides and all that stuff. And um, everything worked out really well, um, thankfully. But it wasn't, you know, I really liked it because it was this video that wasn't this huge treatment and this huge budget and this huge production. It was just, why don't I go home and hang out with my grandpa like I normally would when I go home and just literally exist and do the things that I do. And then I just bring my friend Tyler to come video it. And I've been working with Tyler for three or four years now. We used to live together and they know Tyler and they love Tyler. So it was all family, you know, and I think that's what makes that comfortability factor come through. And like, again, it's a very simple concept, but it just feels heartfelt and it, and it 
it hits home, literally, you know. Like you said, the song itself having such a simple idea behind it, if you would have done a big treatment and all the, it wouldn't have fit, you know? No. Exactly. And it's serving the song. And it's like going back to the Range Rover video. It's like the first thing I ever did in color. And it was like, yes, so much of my brand is black and white. You know what I mean? But my brand is also songs and great songs. And it's my job to serve these songs. And I'm not, I could not picture a Range Rover video in black and white. It's not moody. It's not dark. It's not like vulnerable. It's fun and it's heavy and it's catchy and it needs to be in color. And so it was like, it was actually one of these moments where I was like starting to feel almost trapped by having to post in black and white. And I didn't want to make it this huge event of me like showing up to a red carpet in like a pink suit. Or, I was like, oh, I hate that, you know? And I was just like, well, this is, this is, this is meant to be like, this is actually for a reason and to serve this art, you know what I mean? And so it's like, pretty freeing now like I'm still like black will always be the star of my wardrobe and I'll probably still post most things in black and white just because I like the way it looks but I in my own mind I can do whatever I want now I'm free it feels good oh, I love it the the splash of color that everybody needs okay so since you said you know not everything's dark and moody we have to go straight to who's gonna hold you because I hear this and I'm like wait did wait is this on shuffle I love it it's so fun. It, I mean, honestly, I can absolutely picture this during the summer. Everybody's having a good time. But I also love the juxtaposition of like the lyric. If you were just reading these lyrics, that's not the beat that I would picture going with it. That wasn't necessarily the music bed either. You know, it was more acoustic and a little bit less tempo. Um, but that's kind of just the magic of Jay Joyce is that he hears things that I could never hear. You know what I mean? And he makes this track and like he kind of coaches the band in a way that just it brings the song on a journey like it never repeats itself every section has a moment and an intentionality without stepping on the section before it or after it um and it's just groovy you know what i mean like i've always loved groove but i think like it's sunnier than i usually get it's almost islandy in it but it has this steel guitar which is country but then it kind of feels islandy i don't know it's just this really something I never heard before, you know? And it's also one of those things that I love to do where I like trick my listener into like digesting a really big concept. It's like kind of a spiritual thing. It's like when everything else is gone, like who are you going to be? Who's going to be there for you? You know, when you can't lean on your career anymore, you can't lean on the way that da, 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 whatever it is, it's like, who's going to be there for you. And obviously it, it, it kind of came from this conversation I was having with my wife's father about like spiritual without spirituality and God and stuff. But I kind of put it into a little love song bow and like kind of trick people into just not thinking too much about it. But again, if, if you want to go deeper, it's there for you. You know what I mean? So I like that one. Okay. So let's talk about just overall where you are right now, because I feel like just in knowing you for a number of years and talking to you, I feel like you're happier than you've ever been. Is that true? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's so cool because, like, that's something that I think was important for me to, like, say in these, you know, interviews and stuff, but I haven't even had to say it. You know what I mean? Like, the people that I've got to know the, over the last couple of years have seen how much I've grown, um, and, and, it, and it's evident, and it shines through in the music. You know what I mean? And honestly, that, like, was really hard for me because so much of my inspiration and so much of my reason to make music was because I was not in a good place you know and that was kind of what Dark Horse kind of stemmed from but I've seen the world and I've had a little bit of success and I've fallen in love and I've gotten married and this album is kind of this EP is kind of me trying to make sense of that happiness and like be okay with it and try to understand that like I do deserve that even though I don't know how I got here but like I'm not asking any questions you know and so it is a little bit more hopeful it is a little bit more inspirational um, I'll always be a dark horse and I, I know you can expect a lot more ballads from me on the next project because I miss them trust me um, but I think it was important to just put forth like the things that I've gone through in my life in the last couple of years um, and the changes I've made and, and as far as I've come and I've grown and um, hopefully it inspires somebody else to know that that it's possible for them to you know what I mean it's so good to see you friend Devin Dawson pink slip it's out now amazing songs, guys. Check it out. Let me know your favorite Devin Dawson song. It can be one that he sings or maybe just one that he wrote for somebody else. Write it below in the comments. And while you're there, make sure that you subscribe and you hit the button. That way you know when new episodes come out each and every week. 
you're like moved to the front of the line. It's like your fast pass. Okay, we've got more episodes coming up for you next week. And until then, make sure that you're staying connected with all of the people and things you love the most. Bye.